what has Sinead taught you, what has New York taught you, and what has this tour driving around taught you so far? Oh. New York. It's taught me nothing. But the people there have taught me plenty. Um, mostly a, it's an independent life. It's a very independent life. And it's a life that demands that you be open. And demands that you take responsibility, you know, or suffer the hazards. Also, hey. That's Gampy? Yeah, that's me. That's you. Anything else I can get you right now? Uh, more co more coke. More coke? coke? Okay. Um, it taught me what kind of creative life can be possible, actually, by example, the people I met. You know. When did you take that blind leap of faith? Was it actually? No, it was 1990. Okay. It was when I first moved. I just, you know, sold everything I had and just left uh, Los Angeles. Came to New York. That was it. What has Shanae taught you? Everything you heard now. No, it, it. What did it teach me? It taught me how how to do what I'm doing better. It taught me um, about friendship, about uh, music, about how, how music isn't really mine. Music exists by itself. Just like, you know, the air isn't mine. I don't, I don't own it. It's free. And the people have a direct relationship with it. To the extent that they're open to it, it can flow through them and help them or hurt them. And to the extent that they're closed, it'll mean nothing, you know, and even irritate them as a result. If you have your ears half closed, that's when you can be the most irritated by something. Or your heart half closed. What has this tour taught you? Or it um, that the base actually taught me that the basic seat of uh, the, 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 like the essence of people is like. Uh, How is everything so far? It's great so far. Good. Thank you. People oh, are, are people are basically uh, good, but they're really easily distracted. Did you find that at Chennai? No, in life. It's just I'm not I'm not. There's nothing I, I'm not really used to. There's nothing I'm not really used to about people at all, but it just it just taught me more when I came out, I see so many different places, and um, I I mean I see how like being in a certain city can affect somebody's character, their choices, their music, um, and uh, it also taught me how how to take care of myself, which I still don't do very well. It's just teaching me that I have to. And also the amount of creation that can happen is really crazy. I mean, I'm I'm seeing things that I, I would never see. I mean, just like driving across the Midwest and seeing how America, how America's blood pumps, you know, the, the huge muscle of the heart of it is in the Midwest, people's, you know, farms and the right huge uh, mountainous piles of sawdust that, that, you know, next to a paper mill steaming in, 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 the, in, in this, this gray sky and, and, you know, the people that work there and 
you know, what makes you see that the whole the whole scope of like of this music business is very small. And I wish that I, I was looked upon as like, or anybody was looked upon just like a, a you know, like somebody who you know makes cheese out of milk or or makes paper out of trees or you know or, or who's an environmentalist with a with a tree farm or you know the Vietnam vet. I mean. It's, Everybody needs everybody. I already asked you this, but in case I erased it when I backed up the tape. What do you look for in the future, including Europe? Hmm. I don't have any expectations, really. Now that you've seen America, or mm, no, I've just, I've just, America. I'm beginning to. I've only seen hotels and people. Describe um, the hotels, man. All the same. All the same lures, all the same pay TV channels. All the same MTV, all the same much music. With all the same videos. I don't know if I'm really expecting... Um, my, my, my fantasy of Europe is very, very romantic. Extremely. Because it's the old country, you know. It's where most Americans completely fucking it's where most Americans uh, descend from is Europe and most American music even though even though the the most powerful American music comes from Africa you know and I'd love to go there too but it's you know America uh, Europe is America's roots just like you know, or Europe is white, is white America's roots, and uh, it'll just be really interesting. And they also have like, um, they also have like a. It's mainly because they have like a real, um, big heart for artists, and they have a special attention. And they have, like, it's not hard to, to, to put across the concept of a guy singing in a pub. As it is, like, people were shocked that I came into their coffee houses. People were shocked that I came into their cafes and sang. Like, wow, I didn't expect you to come here. What type of reaction have you been getting? All pretty good. You know, I've had criticisms here and there. And just been real, but mostly people, the, the overwhelming thing is that people have been real. Does that comfort you? Does that satisfy you? No. It makes me feel good for them, though. People don't get to be real. There's very little call for being real all the time, especially at your job or... Does that make you at ease on stage? Being Realizing that they're like that? No, I have no idea how they're like. They could be anyway, but I... No. Just, uh... Knowing that music is going to come puts me at ease on stage. That's all. Stage is just a box. Also, I mean, being on the road is, it's a, for me, and every single performance, it's new. Every performance will be new till the day I die because people are completely different from day to day. And I'm so sensitive to the room, you know. And being on the road is so romantic.